Welcome back to Pale Horse Outdoors. I've got over a hundred hours on this tractor and I've also got over a hundred hours on this grapple. And today I'm gonna to show you just a few tips and tricks. So this first one's actually gonna be pretty easy. Since the logs are already more or less parallel on the ground, all I have to do is push them together into a tighter group and then pull them up into the grapple teeth. First, I put the grapple's lower jaw against the nearest log, then push forward to roll the logs together into a tighter group. Once they are close enough together, I roll the grapple forward and lower the upper jaw to make a cage around them. I pinch and curl while raising or lowering the loader arm so that the teeth can pull the logs up into the grapple into a tight group. Once I have them all, I back away as I'm raising the loader arms and then swerve left or right to make sure I'm clear of any roots. So this one's going to be just a little bit more difficult because a larger log is now laying across the smaller logs. So I'm going to use a technique to pull that log into place. I open the top jaw all the way so that the grapple teeth can reach the end of the bigger log. Next, I move the tractor backward until the log falls into place. As before, I push the logs together into a tighter group. From this point, I pinch and curl the grapple while adjusting the loader arms as before. Finally, I back away while swerving to make sure I'm clear of any roots. So this one is much more difficult because there's a small log laying at almost a perpendicular angle to the grapple. So for this one, I'm going to use a pushing technique. Like before, I open the top jaw all the way so I can use the grapple teeth to nudge the smaller log. This time, I move the tractor forward and to the left until the log is pushed into place. As before, I push the logs together into a tighter group. From this point, I pinch and curl the grapple while adjusting the loader arms as before. Finally, I back away while swerving to make sure I'm clear of any roots. Maneuvering through tight trails with a grapple can be quite a challenge, especially if you're carrying a load of logs. Now cutting and blocking them evenly can really help out, but sometimes you have to pick up an uneven load from a brush pile that doesn't make getting through the woods any easier. When I drive through my trails with a load that's uneven or wider than the path, I tend to hook the ends of the load around the nearest tree, then weave my way to the next point. This doesn't always work as planned, and sometimes a long branch or log could be broken off by a tree, so I only attempt this if I feel it will be safe for me and my equipment. Of course, it's always a good idea to go slow. 
I also raise or lower my grapple to avoid low stumps and foliage that I don't want to damage. When dropping a load onto a pile like this, I go slowly and try to avoid logs rolling back down onto my tractor. If a log doesn't land quite right, I try to use the grapple to position it. If I can't reach the log, like in this case, I extend the upper jaw for further reach and push the log into place. I often use my grapple to reshape refuse piles in the forest. This one is equal parts roots, branches, and dirt, and it is very dense. I smooth it out by pushing up on the sides in stepping motions to minimize stress on the front end. Rolling the grapple forward allows for better smoothing, especially on this dense material. With the grapple rolled forward, I can easily tamp down these looser spots. Earlier in the video, I showed you how I back up and swerve away when lifting loads in the woods and on the trails. If my grapple gets caught on a root while lifting at full force, my tractor could be tipped and seriously damaged. I back away while swerving to make sure I'm clear of any roots. A landscape rake is a pretty handy implement, but I don't use mine that much anymore and it's rarely mounted to my tractor. So if I'm out working and I need to do a quick rake, I use my grapple. My grapple makes for a pretty decent heavy rake and I've used it for many things from lightly grading dirt to raking grass and hay and even removing blackberry stalks. I roll the grapple forward and extend the upper jaw until it hits the stops. This helps prevent stress to the hydraulic system. The angle of the teeth determines how aggressive the raking will be. Steeper angles are more aggressive and shallow angles are less aggressive. Generally, I keep the angle shallow and I only use my grapple as a rake when the loader arms are in float mode. Sometimes you're out working with your grapple and you just need to knock something down. Now that could be an old fence post or it could be a small sapling. If you put your grapple into this configuration, you've got yourself a pretty sturdy battering ram. Now a word of caution, don't put any undue stress on your front end. The owner of this property asked me to remove these old fence corners. Even though they're wooden posts, I take it easy and go at it slowly until they come down. If for some reason they just wouldn't budge, I wouldn't force it and would simply find another way to remove them. Before we end today, I would like to go back to the shop and talk about one more thing. In this scenario, you've just come back from a day of working with your bucket or other attachment and you want to put your grapple back onto the SSQA. Everything is going smoothly until That's right, one of the hydraulic hoses won't connect. The first thing I do is try to relieve more pressure by cycling the three-point loader and third function valves. Did that work? No, it didn't. The connector valve on the grapple side is still under too much pressure. I'm sure there are many ways to solve this problem, but bleeding the line is quick and easy. This hose configuration will likely look different on your grapple because it's a dealer install. After removing the line, I bleed out a good portion of the hydraulic oil.
I've reconnected the line, so now I can put the grapple back onto the SSQA and give it another try. Alright, there we go. So that's the basics of using a grapple and just a little bit more. I hope you had a good time today and please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell and I'd really appreciate it if you'd give this video a like. Thanks again.